I'm here in Venice with Generali, which is one of the world's largest insurers, where I've been talking about the future of the insurance industry, digital tech, and of course, things like blockchain. Now, we often talk about blockchain, but actually very few people really understand what it is. It's the same technology that's been used to underpin the success of new cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. Elements of uh, digital code which have real value. They are actual virtual coins. They're traded against many currencies and they are built using computers. It's very expensive to build them. It costs a lot of electrical power. So each Bitcoin has a real value. And these Bitcoins, as I say, are a currency. They are a, an anonymous trading currency. They can be used online to pay for all kinds of goods and services. They can't be tracked. They are therefore sometimes controversial because they've been used in the past for illegal things such as uh, buying drugs or arms deals. Nevertheless, Bitcoins are becoming a very widely used currency for e-commerce in general. Now, Bitcoins only work because when you use a Bitcoin, it's used up, it's uh, transferred in value to someone else. And we have to keep record of that in a register, which we call a block, a block added to a chain, a chain, each block is is uh, stamped with a date and a time so we can see that the Bitcoin that's been used up, it's, it's moved from Venice to Paris and it can't be spent again. And it sits on the block as a registered transaction in a chain of transactions. So that means that we have a very secure system for record keeping and it's the record keeping which is particularly important for the insurance industry. Let's imagine for instance that we used the same technology, the blockchain, to keep a record of your car. So let's say we have the registration number of your car, we have the details of who bought it, uh, who paid the tax on it, where it's registered, how many owners it's had, how many accidents it's had, when it was last serviced, when uh, it was covered with an insurance policy, when the claim was made, whether the claim's been paid out and so on. It could be very, very important for insurance companies to be able to track these things because it means that they can more easily prevent multiple claims for the same accident on the same car, to prevent fraud, in other words. Let's take an example of travel insurance. We could have someone taking out travel for, let's say, a holiday to Brazil from Paris, and it's due to pay out if the airline cancels their flight. Well, we can record the existence of the policy on blockchain as a fixed act, which can't be altered or deleted or moved it's there fixed in the cyber world we can uh, be sure that that premium has been paid we can be sure that the airline has cancelled their flight because that event is also recorded on the blockchain so the blockchain system could connect the two events together and mean that the person who's got the travel cover receives a refund into their bank account before they've even realized that the flight's been cancelled as simple as that cutting an enormous amount of paperwork as i say preventing fraud very elegant, very easy, very secure, very tight, and actually the future. Now, it's not just insurance. We could use it for legal documents. We can use it to underwrite payments across borders for all kinds of different things. So we're going to hear a lot more about blockchain. And we're also going to hear a lot more about speculative fintech companies that have tried to ride the blockchain boom and lost a lot of money. So watch this space. It's a very exciting area. In internet terms, we're sort of in the date of 1997, of where the internet was when it first began. That's the sort of stage we are with blockchain right now. It's early, speculative, exciting, and we all know it's going to change a lot of the things that happen behind the scenes.